Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you very much for uh, being here. My name is um, Fako Boerstra. I'm the driver for Lubago Amsterdam. Um, why are we here tonight? We are here tonight to celebrate the graduation of Batch 154. And nine, nine weeks ago, 17 amazing people joined us on this coding adventure. Um, it's been intensive. In the last two weeks, they have been working on their final project. They have been building their first web application. And later tonight, we will demonstrate these products that they have built. But um, before we tell you a little bit more about the products that they have built, we would first like to tell you a little bit more about Le Wago. So for those of you who do not know uh, Le Wago, um, we're a coding school. We organize coding boot camps. And in nine weeks, we teach people the technical skills they need in order to find an interesting job in the tech industry. This could be as a developer, product manager, or uh, we often see entrepreneurs joining our bootcamp as well uh, because they would like to learn how to build their startup. Um, we, during these boot camps, which are quite intensive, by the way, um, we teach them the hard skills, the programming languages they need in order to build products such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, but also Ruby and Ruby on Rails, amongst a few others. Um, hard skills is one thing, but they also need to learn the soft skills. How do we collaborate with other developers? How do we set up a workflow for technical products? Um, what to do if we have a merge conflict? How to deploy a product? So they learn many soft skills by collaborating in teams towards the end of the bootcamp. So, Tonight, five products have been built, and um, this was made possible uh, with the help of uh, our teachers. Um, I would therefore like to ask for a round of applause for all the teachers and TAs that joined us during this bootcamp. But um, you guys did the hard work. And I would like to tell you guys that I'm incredibly proud of you. Uh, you worked very hard. It was blood, sweat, and tears, if I may say, this boot camp. Um, but you guys worked really hard. I'm incredibly proud of you. Um, it's really difficult for other people to understand how much you learned. Basically, what you would normally learn in two years, you're now done in nine weeks. And um, me, my team, we're all very proud of what you guys pulled off. And I think you guys deserve a really big round of applause. So, demo time. Um, what I would like to do next is I would like to call uh, Andy onto the stage, who is a teacher at Le Bogo Amsterdam. Um, he will be introducing the demos for tonight. After we finish demo day, we would like to invite you upstairs to our bootcamp space to um, celebrate the uh, end and start of this magnificent journey they went on. Cool. Thank you. Please give it up for Andy. Okay. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm Andy. I uh, was lucky enough to be a teacher in this batch. Uh, just for a couple of weeks, and I hope all the students uh, will remember those weeks, uh, not only because I was hard on them, but also because uh, these were the days where they first discovered Ruby on Rails, which is a web framework that powers all these amazing products that you are going to see in a moment. And modern web development is incredibly complex. Uh, people who haven't seen it on the inside, they have a hard time realizing just how much engineering effort goes into creating websites that we all use every day and take for granted. And it's easy to get lost in the details of a technical implementation and lose sight of a bigger picture that the products are for users. They're intended to make their lives easier. And I'm proud to say that all our teams, they have managed to keep dreaming big and keep their ambitions high all those products have very big goals. So without further ado, I'm going to give the stage to our first team, to Ryan and Gabby. And their product is set to revolutionize uh, the internet podcast industry, the way we look for podcasts, the way we recommend them, and the way we promote their authors. So 
The project is called Mamdio. I just learned that it means recommend in, in Basque. Short version of that. Go yeah. 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 Oh. It's up to you to explain this. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Andy. Who here has listened to a podcast before? Great, as expected. But more importantly, who here would listen to podcasts more often if you had a better way to find the podcasts you loved? Good. Now, this is one of the main problems that we sought to solve when building Mindio. Now, I want to tell you a story about Gabby. Gabby is an avid podcast listener, but she, sh she shares you and I's problem. She doesn't have a good way to find the podcasts that she loves. And we all share this problem. There are currently an overwhelming amount of podcast episodes on the internet. Last I checked, 24 million. And yet, still no good way to filter down to the ones we should actually spend our time listening to. That is until Gabby found Mindio. Because what Mindio is, is a platform for publicly donating to podcast episodes. And the idea behind this is that a public donation functions very similar to a recommendation. Because if I'm willing to publicly donate to something, you sure bet I'd be willing to recommend it. Now what Gabby can do with her Mendio account is she can follow all sorts of individuals of whose recommendations she might value or respect. And in Gabby's case, she happens to know someone with a Mendio account, and that person is Forrest Gump. And she can easily search for Forrest's account from the main page. And after doing so, she can then navigate to Forrest's profile page. And from here, she has access to all kinds of information, such as all of Forrest's previous episode donations. She can scroll through them and see if Forrest is really an individual that she'd like to follow. Another, per another thing she can do is see all the people that Forrest himself follows. And as she's doing this, she sees Michelle Obama, who happens to be a mutual friend of her and Forrest. So what she decides to do, she decides to follow both Michelle and Forrest. Now what will happen now is both of these individuals' donations will now be included on her main feed on her homepage. And if she goes back to the homepage, she will see these as well as lots of other donations from people she's following. And as she's scrolling through, one catches her eye. It's an episode, of the Joe Rogan experience, an interview with Ryan Sickler. And it catches her eye, and what she can do now is she can bookmark this episode for later. So at a later date, Let's say she wants to go on a run and listen to a podcast, right? She now can access the bookmarks tab of the application where she can see a curated list of all the episodes that she's recently bookmarked on Mendio. And on this run, she decides to listen to that interview with Ryan Sickler. And it turns out she loves it. She loves it so much that she decides to sub donate and support the this episode herself. Now here's where, and she can do this very easily, but here's where the magic of Mindio comes in. Because Mindio isn't just a platform for publicly donating to podcast episodes, it's also an affiliate network. Because what it does is it keeps track of influence. And it does this by keeping track of all the episodes that Gabby has seen herself. And it knows that she's seen this episode before, this episode with Ryan Sickler. And it also knows that she saw it because of Forrest's initial donation. So what Forrest will actually get is a 10% cut of Gabby's donation. So if her donation is $10, a dollar of it will actually go back to Forrest, while nine will go to Joe Rogan for his excellent podcast. And it's important to note that the same rules apply to Gabby. Anyone who re-donates after her initial donation, she will receive a cut of. Now, you might be wondering, what if her, podcast, or her episode donation is not the product of anyone's influence? It's from her own mind and her mind alone. Well, Mindio accounts for this as well. She can navigate to the new donation portion. It, well, let's say that while she was listening to the Joe Rogan uh, Experience episode with Ryan Sickler, she finds another one with Eric Griffin, and she wants to search for this podcast. So she can easily search for the Joe Rogan Experience, and then specifically for Eric Griffin. And this time, it's just as easy. She just inputs them out, and boom, it's done. Now, as I said before, Anyone who re-donates after her donation, she will get a cut of. And this is valuable information for Gabby, something that she might want to keep tabs on. And she can see this, as well as all sorts of other information from her notifications section, where she can see anyone who's recently followed her or bookmarked her donations, and also any donations that she herself has influenced. Now, this sums up the story of a podcast listener on Mendio, but it's not the only story we seek to cater at Mendio. The other side of this is the podcast creator. Now, what you might be realizing 
is Menio presents an awesome way for podcast creators to monetize their content. Now, let's say that while Gabby is doing this, she begins to notice, like, wow, Joe Rogan is certainly making a lot of money through Mendio. Maybe I want to get on this action. Maybe I want to create my own podcast, the Gabby Bronco experience. And this is given that she's already created a iTunes podcast on their platform, this is really easy to do with Mendio. She just navigates to the list of podcasts section of Mendio where she pastes in a valid iTunes RSS feed. And after that's done, then she doesn't have to worry about it because Mendio will now sync up with iTunes. So any changes she makes on the iTunes platform, say she changes the podcast description or she adds an episode, those changes will now be reflected on Mendio. So she doesn't ever have to mess with it again. Um, that's not the only thing she gets. She now has access to a podcast dashboard where she can see all kinds of information, such as her total revenue or most donated to episodes, as well as her average donation per episode. Now, both of these stories, the story of the podcast listener and the story of the podcast creator, represent what we believe to be an incredibly innovative solution to two pressing problems, not only in the podcast ecosystem, but the greater digital content ecosystem of the internet. And those two problems are one, content creation. That is, how do we as consumers, or in this case, listeners, find the content that we want to spend our time on? And the second problem is content monetization. That is, how do our beloved content creators monetize their content so that they can make a living? And that solution is Mendio, a platform that just might revolutionize how we interact with media on the internet. Thank you. If you have any, sorry. If you have any questions, talk to me, uh, my teammate Gabby Bronco, or my teammate Bob Mueller in the back. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. If, if, if I ever get my own podcast, I will make sure to... Great, great. Well, uh, so the, the rules of our demo night today is just uh, two presenters on stage, but of course there is more work put into these projects, and there are more people working on them. We have teams of three or four students. They are all hardworking individuals, so don't let the presenters um, steal the spotlight. Keep in mind there are more people uh, in it. So I give the floor to our next project. I give the floor to Natalia and Lucia, who will present Playfinder, which is an app made for all parents and their kids, especially if those families live in Amsterdam. So I, I have a kid too, so I will be thrilled to find out more about it. Okay. Please welcome. Well, hello. Uh, so anybody else here have kids? Yeah, like nephews? <laughs> Some kid to take care of sometimes? Uh, so. Anybody have the problem of not knowing what to do with this kid sometimes and like staying home can be a little bit painful? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, I have a friend, Lorelai Gilmore. She just moved into Amsterdam and she has a five years old girl and she has the same problem. She doesn't know what to do with the kids sometimes and because she doesn't know Amsterdam so well, she doesn't know which playgrounds and places are suitable for a five years old girl. So she went on the internet and she found this app called Plain Finder and she discovered that on this website you can search through places, playgrounds and events in Amsterdam you can save content to your bucket list and you can even share with your friends and family and that seems exactly what she looks for. So she was really happy to see what's happening now in Amsterdam. There are some events that might be interesting for Rory. So she saved some of them to her bucket list and she decides to search a little bit more and see what Playfinder is about. So Rory is a very active girl and because today is a bit sunny, she would like to go to a playground. And she's five years, ago, years old, so it would be nice to go to a playground where there's no much little kids and not older kids. So she might think something with sand and nature is interesting, so she wants to take the kid there. And she wants to see more information about this playground. More information. Um, so she sees the address and she thinks it's a pretty nice place so she might want to share that with her friends on Google and if she wants she can do that through Play Finder 
and everybody will know where she's going, uh, which is awesome for her family to know where she's going. And okay, now she would like to see what she has so far on her bucket list. And she has some stuff there, but she's, she might not want to go to all of them. So she can also delete from her bucket list some stuff. And now she has a bunch of stu stuff to decide where to take Rory. And that's how Playfinder helps Lorelai to uh, solve her problem of not knowing what to do. <laughs> and that's how Playfinder can help you, all of you as well. If you have a kid and don't know what to do, you can just check out Playfinder and it might help you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. So, uh, okay, it's, it's, it's summer, and perhaps it's time to uh, get out of Amsterdam, uh, perhaps to a place with a, a nicer weather, uh, and go on a vacation. And uh, our next team, uh, who I'm happy to present, uh, Dylan and uh, Jason, they are both uh, avid travelers, but they hate to be called tourists. And no one likes to be called a tourist, and perhaps for a good reason. Uh, so their application uh, is willing to shake up the travel industry by introducing a more responsible and sustainable way to discover new destinations. How about that? So I give the floor to Dylan. Hey, everybody. So I'm sure, here, here, I'm sure everyone here loves to travel. Us at the Good Travel Team also are avid travelers. I myself have been to 25 countries. I've lived in eight. Um, <clears throat> one thing I've noticed, however, is in nearly every country I've been to, we're causing irreparable damage to our like, sensitive environments, uh, beautiful and unique cultures, and <laughs> um, you know, we're causing irreparable damage, basically. So, in 2017, $8.2 trillion was uh, contributed to the global GDP through travel. Um, I, from what I've seen, very little of that made it to the hands of the locals or the environments. Um, good travel is an attempt to turn that around and let and help the travel uh, help <laughs> basically enable travel to be supportive uh, and help, <laughs> I, never mind. Um, so yeah, we aim to fix travel. Um, at Good Travel, you can not only select, like find good travel experiences and it's easy and quick to book them, but most importantly, when you select, when you book through Good Travel, the commission is distributed evenly out into the community. Um, so, to tell the story and to demonstrate how good travel works, I'm going to tell a story about a young lady named Jasmine. Jasmine got to Amsterdam last night. She's a first time traveler. She's interested in authentic cultural experiences and making a difference, uh, making an impact in society. Last night she got to her hostel and the receptionist, Bob, gave her a key and a piece of good travel affiliate material. Any local in, any, in your favorite travel destination could be a, a good travel affiliate. When, when Jasmine gets to her room later that night and she's considering what to her, what experience she wants to do the next day, she goes to Good Travel and um, looks through the app and you know she's interested in history, she's interested in culture, um, she's gonna go on a canal tour here in Amsterdam. <clears throat> so, the first thing that she notices that makes this stand out from any other travel booking experience is a, per a percentage of the commission is going to go towards an NGO that she gets to choose. Um, <clears throat> So she's interested in War Child. She's going to take a look at it, find a little more information. She's convinced. She's going to go ahead and book the experience. And yeah. So basically, she's a smart girl. 
she wants to get there before the rush of the thousand tourists visiting Amsterdam in the summer. She's going to go for the 8 a.m. tour. And before she checks out, she's going to make sure she selects an NGO that she'd like to contribute to with her booking. So she's chosen War Child. After booking, she it, once, once, one last time reviews her booking confirmation and is reminded once again that she's supporting War Child. Travel is expensive. And fortunately for Jasmine, that, the, the, that expense is lessened. It's made less abrupt because she is making a difference with her booking. And yeah, once again, right before she, like once she receives her payment confirmation, she's reminded that this booking contributed something to a local NGO as well as to a local affiliate who introduced her to good travel in the first place. So we invite all of you to help fix travel by becoming a good traveler, a good local, and a good host with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. Great job. Uh, our next application is also meant to be discovered on a mobile screen, so we'll have some time to set up uh, to make sure it goes smooth. And uh, Young and David here, they actually drew inspiration from one of the principles behind our boot camp. Uh, so we have this thing called body system where, where, where students code in pairs uh, when they start learning hard uh, material, they split in pairs and they help each other and they code together and we call it bodies system. So uh, David and Young, they found a way to keep the body spirit alive even after the boot camp and they added a little bit of a Tinder twist on it. So <laughs> let's, let's see how it looks like. Uh, please give welcome to Dev Body. So, hello. Um, don't you wish at the press of a button you can find a person who you can share your passion? Because for me, I'm always longing for this passionate and interesting conversation. Especially after nine weeks of boot camp at Liu Wegong, I found two things about myself. First, that I'm actually capable of becoming a good developer. And second, Developers are actually very interesting people. I mean, they're sometimes like nerdy and geeky, but putting that aside, they're usually very smart and creative people who got so much interesting things to say about. That's why I plan to continue to meet more developers after graduating from Liu Gong. However, there's only one problem, and that is it is so difficult for me to find the right developer around me. I mean, there's like a freelance website, like uh, Elance, where you can uh, go and hire a developer to do work for you, but they're usually looking for the money and not the genuine relationship, right? Or there's a website like um, Stack Overflow where you can go and ask a bunch of uh, technical pro uh, questions to developers, but the problem is that you never get to meet them in person and have a nice cup of tea. Finally, um, there's a thing called Meetup where you can actually go and meet new people. But the, in that case, you never you know, get to choose who you meet. You just take what is given, right? <laughs> so I was a bit frustrated because I was not able to find the right developers around me until one day my friend David told me about this cool app called Dev Buddy. DevBuddy offers you a simple and easy way to meet developers around you. Let me explain how it works. So today I'm going to pretend myself as a first time user and sign up with my ID and password I made a few days ago. So this is the main page for DevBuddy um, where I can see uh, profiles of many new different developers. So let's see what I have. The guy named Otto, uh, he looks a very familiar face to me. And um, yeah, uh, senior software developer. And his language, he seems to specialize in C++, C Sharp. 
let's let's scroll down a little bit and find more about the team. Um, the education, okay, it's a strong background in education, and but I don't know, I don't know because you know I'm not really interested in C. I'm more a Ruby guy, so I think I'll just uh, pass this guy up by simply swiping to the left and see more developers. Okay, the next guy is a oh, it's a weird name, Price, but <laughs> but anyway. Um, He's, he seemed to specialize in language Ruby, so I think we might have something in common. Um, so why don't we um, dive deeper and scroll down? And okay, bootcamp Ruby, oh, th that's another common thing. And let's scroll down a little bit. Um, to So about price, I have diverse working experience from startup to corporate, oh, okay. Hey, you know what, I, I, I'm not really looking for a corporate guy, so. <laughs> Um, sorry, but I think I'll, I'll just look more. Um, so why don't we swipe left and see more developers? Okay, Donna, database developer. Okay, she seems to have a good background in a language. And yeah, let's find more about th this person. Um, okay, strong background in education. And about Donna, oh, doing an apprenticeship at IBM. And she loves to talk about philosophy which I also like to talk about. So I think she could be a very perfect fit for me. So I think for this time, we're gonna um, try to meet her by swiping right, and let's see what happens. Oh, it's a match. <laughs> oh, it's like even faster than Tinder. I didn't expect this, but okay. Uh, why, why don't you try to send her a message and see if we can agree on some time and dates to meet? Um, so yeah, let's just say hi and if you're available, so, yeah, hi, Donna. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I think she's a little bit busy at this moment, so I think I'll go back and talk to the other guy who I made a connection before. So, Latita, oh, okay. So, hi, so let's ask this guy um, if he's available this weekend to meet me up. Hi, you. It takes a little time to get the response. Hey, do you, let's ask him like if what she's up to on this weekend, and let's see if I can meet him this weekend. Okay. Uh, oh, he's with you. Okay, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm a little slow at typing, so it takes a little bit time. Okay. Um. Yeah, don't be shy. Let's just ask him if he's available. <laughs> okay, okay. A little typo is fine. Um, so I'm still waiting for the other person to. You okay? Okay, okay. Um, I, I think he's making a joke. I don't have to pay, but. Um, Let's yeah set up a time to meet this guy um, tomorrow. Tomorrow eight, yeah. Tomorrow eight. I think he should be fine with tomorrow eight. I hope so. All right, sounds good. So, see, um, it was kind of a quick and easy way to just uh, meet f and find a developer around me, and. I think this is how DevBody offers you a way to meet and find uh, interesting people around you. And by doing so, um, I may meet someone who I can collaborate on a certain project, or just simply learn from each other, or may become a, a potential business partner at some time. So if you're into coding just like me, you should definitely check out DevBody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Young. Thank you, David. So, uh, Levagon Boot Camp is not called a boot camp for nothing, you know? It's quite challenging. It's uh, 10 hours a day, five days a week. Uh, we barely give people time to eat their lunch. So, it is quite challenging. And it's easy to, in this tempo, it's easy to forget about, about the well being. And this is perhaps why. Uh, the team who is going to present uh, our final project of the night uh, focused on health. 
so uh, Meek and Well here present Body Dash, uh, who aims to change the way we think about medical services. Yes. So give a Thank you. round of applause to <laughs> Val and Mick. So, hi everyone, uh, my name is Mick. I'm here uh, representing on behalf of my team uh, for Body Dash, the dashboard for your body. So, um, yeah, everyone knows that prevention is better than cure, right? But how many of you actually go to a doctor when they seem perfectly fine? See, yeah, just like I thought, no one. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the problem we have right now. We live in a reactive healthcare system while we think it should be a proactive healthcare system. Like the way people uh, nowadays try to stay healthy is by um, yeah, eating healthy and exercising regularly. But the problem is they don't really have access to one of the most impactful and uh, yeah, motivational uh, information there is, and that is uh, yeah, data on how you're doing from the inside. Next to that, it's a really slow and painful process to go to a doctor, get yourself tested, um, yeah, do the actual test, and then uh, end up having to go back to the doctor to actually uh, yeah, review your results. Now, uh, Body Dash aims to take away all these pain points uh, by providing regular blood tests and um, yeah, to take control of your own body. And the way we want to do this is in four simple steps. So you have a simple and convenient testing, uh, verifies results that are trusted from an accredited lab, and the results will be ready in 48 hours. Uh, then there's recommendations based in science, plus uh, you get your own personal advice uh, yeah, ready for you in your own dashboard. Now. Uh, imagine John, he's a hard-working guy, uh, he's in his mid-40s and he wants to provide for his family, has to work a lot and he doesn't have a lot of time. Now, John, he got represented, of a, he got a recommended Body Dash a few, four months ago by a friend and yeah, he was really shocked by the results he got back. So now, uh, four months later, uh, John is back on Body Dash and yeah, he changed his uh, diet, he uh, uh, exercised a bit more and he's really keen to take the test again to see how he improved uh, compared to the last time. So he heads over to the advanced package, which he uh, did last time, and uh, the, advanced pa the advanced package, yeah, they, uh, yeah, they contain the critical uh, things such as uh, the checking for cholesterol, which is related to uh, yeah, heart disease and uh, risk of stroke. And then there's vitamin D, which for instance, uh, yeah, if you have a lack of vitamin D, yeah, you can feel tired a bit more and you get sick uh, more often. And then there's ferritin, which is uh, yeah, a protein linked to iron, which also makes you feel tired more if you have a lack of iron. Now, John uh, takes the test again, so he goes to the smooth checkout process. And um, yeah, while he's doing that, he's reflecting on his last testing results. So the last time he did it, he had a really high cholesterol and also his vitamin D was quite low, which did not really come as a surprise since uh, yeah, he is a bit overweight. I'm not talking about it myself, by the way. Uh, and next to that, uh, he spends most of the time in an office. So yeah, uh, he, the thing is he wasn't surprised by the results, but actually seeing those results really yeah, made, him, uh, yeah, made him want to do something about it. So now uh, he bought the test, went to, to the smooth checkout process, and yeah, he has to do three more steps. So he gets a package uh, sent to his home. Uh, the package contains uh, labeled uh, testing tubes and a pre-filled form, which he can take to one of the 800 labs in the Netherlands, uh, and there uh, get himself tested by one of the accredited nurses. Now, uh, the best thing about this is that he did not have to make any appointment because he could just walk in there and uh, they would take the test from him. So, um, yeah, now he did all this in the meantime, and two days later, he receives an email stating uh, and a message in his dashboard, as you can see right here, that uh, his results were ready. So immediately he goes to his personal dashboard in which he can find some personal information, uh, previous orders, but also his personal health profile, which he filled in himself so the doctor can review yeah, who he is and relate better to the test results. So, and of course, he can go to the actual test results. Um, so, he goes to his test results, and yeah, the first thing he sees is he's happy. He has a good, uh, good, uh, good message from Dr. House, which you probably all know, it's a well-known doctor. And uh, yeah, uh, he says uh, everything went a lot better than the last time. And uh, yeah, and still, yeah, the, the, the dashboard speaks for itself. It's easy to see where he has uh, still some room for improvement. And he tries to uh, check out his vitamin D levels. And yeah, here, 
he looks at it and he sees, oh, he's uh, in the green again. So yeah, it really helped that he spent some more time outside lately and yeah, really get some more vitamin D. And then there's the last point, uh, yeah, his cholesterol, which is uh, yeah, very important to him. Uh, and he checks it and oh, yes, finally, yeah, being on a diet really helped him out to not be, uh, yeah, to stay in the clear. But he immediately starts fantasizing about this big juicy hamburger again. So he tries to control himself and um, yeah, he's really motivated to stay on top of his health and take control of his body by uh, yeah, keeping on using body dash. So if any of you here uh, feels interested in this, then uh, and want to take control over your own body, then please go to our website, bodydash.co, and leave your email so uh, yeah, we can send you a message as soon as we go live. Thank you. Um, I don't have a demo to show. Um, I would like to thank everyone for uh, being here. We have seen five really amazing uh, applications. Um, what we would like to do next is, um, after I've called all the students on the stage for one final round of applause, we would like to invite you upstairs in our bootcamp space where all the action took place. We'll have some um, finger food over there. We have some nice drinks. It's a nice opportunity to talk to the students, uh, teachers or me. Um, I would like to call all the students onto the stage for one final round of applause.